All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. I am Blue Monkey, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the must-have non-exotic pets for every spec in the Hunter class. Now, you might think that this video only pertains to survival and to marksmanship, but that's actually not true because a lot of these pets, or at least a few of them that I'm going to list in this video, bring a combination of abilities that other exotic pets just don't have. A lot of these pets that I'm going to be recommending to you guys today, I actually keep on my person at all times i think they're just that good especially considering that i like to play many different types of content both pvp and pve it's good to have a wide variety and trust me we do have a wide variety of pets in this video so wanted to remind you that leaving me a like on the video does help the channel out a ton and if you want to see new hunter videos every single week be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell without further ado let's jump right in so as you're watching this video you might start noticing a theme and some of you might say that I have a little bit of a PvP bias, which may be true, but you have to keep in mind that a lot of the special abilities that these pets have don't have much of an application in PvE content unless it's solo, which is unfortunate. And in my last video, I called for some pet changes, but that's beside the point. Let's get started with the Raptors. The Raptors have a very unique combination of abilities because they not only are in the Cunning Pet family bringing you Pathfinding and Master's Call, that's a plus 8% movement speed, and you also get an ability that helps you get out of roots and snares. Now, the special ability that the Raptors have is called Savage Rend, otherwise known as Mortal Wounds. It says, grievously wounds the target, reducing the effectiveness of any healing received for 10 seconds. Now, the combination of this ability, not only is there no exotic pets in the game, with the combination of mortal wounds and the cunning pet family but the combination of mortal wounds and cunning is absolutely phenomenal in arena content and battlegrounds as well battlegrounds as well but it just seems to be that especially in arenas when most of the time when you're fighting you're gonna have an enemy healer healing your opponent this mortal wounds ability is constantly being triggered and constantly in effect now against enemy players that's a 25 percent reduction in healing received and that's huge i mean 25 percent can and will more often than not put your damage over the top you know what i mean your damage is going to outweigh the healing that the enemy has received and that's huge and combined with the fact that pvp and specifically arenas is such a cc heavy place being able to get out of those roots and stairs with the master's call and being able to move around the map more deftly it's just there's there's nothing else like it now in my opinion you're going to want to have an undead raptor as well as a live raptor and the reason behind that is because the undead raptors are immune to scare beast hibernate polymorph saps and hexes but since it's undead they can also be put under the effects of something like shackle undead turn evil wake of ashes whereas the live raptors cannot but they are vulnerable to those hexes polymorph saps etc so depending on what type of enemy that you're facing it's just going to determine what pet that that you take whether it's undead or whether it's live i have a hard time recommending a specific raptor because in my opinion they just all look so damn cool um, so knock yourselves out guys. Um, I'm partial to this guy right here, the undead Ravasaur, who does come out of the King's Rest Dungeon. One of a kind pet right here. I hi highly recommend picking him up. Next, we're going to look at the Ridgeback Alpha. Now it doesn't show here, um, but he's actually transparent. Now I'll throw some different footage up for you guys so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. He is not a spirit beast. He in fact belongs to the gorilla pet species. Now the gorillas belong to the ferocity pet family and thus bring you predator's thirst and primal rage, which is going to give you a little bit of passive leech as well as a giant offensive cooldown, boosting your haste and all party and raid members by 30% for 40 seconds. This is basically the bloodlust ability that shamans have or whatever it's called for the alliance adding to the solo benefits of the ferocity pet family the gorillas also come with a silverback ability it says when falling below 40 percent health the gorilla will shrug off attacks granting 60 percent reduced incoming damage for 15 seconds can only happen once every two minutes but this pet right here is basically the cleft hoof without the cleft hoof's exotic ability in my opinion there are other good pets that you can solo with but in my opinion the gorillas take the cake because as long as your pet's doing damage it's going to be healing itself with that 10 or 15 percent leech and not only that if you're messing up with your pen pet 
or you know if you find yourself in a sudden pinch the silverback ability will save your pet's life um and all in all just a great pet to solo with uh again if you are playing beast mastery you might as well just take a cleft hoof if you don't have a cleft hoof take a gorilla if you're playing survival or marksmanship take a gorilla and actually you know what i'll go ahead and throw a map up on the screen for the ridgeback alpha for you he's gonna be the top of a waterfall right here at the very bottom of nazmir almost the top of zoldazar next we have the fell raven just look at this guy i fucking love this pet i think this guy looks absolutely beastly he's got this sick ass armor that almost looks like antlers he's got blades on his wings he's purple and green my two favorite colors i mean what more can you really ask for? Uh, I'm glad you asked, because I'm about to tell you. Cunning Pet Family, again, bringing you Pathfinding and Master's Call, giving you a little bit of a movement speed boost, and an ability to help you get out of roots and snares, also comes with the Talon Rend ability. It says the Bird of Prey claws of the target's feet, reducing movement speed by 50% for 6 seconds. Now, it's on a 10 second cooldown. So, if the pet AI was perfect, and I've said this before, if the pet AI was perfect, your enemy would be slowed 60% of the time if you let your pet auto cast it. The pet AI is not perfect, not by any means. But we'll just go ahead and round down and say that if you let your pet auto cast this ability, your enemies are going to be slowed by 50% about 50% of the time. Now that's huge. Not only if you're doing PvP content, because obviously you can see the benefit here of slowing your enemy down and speeding yourself up, regardless of what spec you're playing. That is an incredible combination for either keeping the distance from your opponent or closing the distance between you and your opponent. Not to mention, this is a great pet to have if you're just trying to breeze through some world content. You got some quests that need to be done? Do you need to do world quests? Are you in the maw without a mount for the love of God? You know what I mean? Just a great combination of abilities that bring a very synergistic utility that caters to a play style that I quite enjoy playing. Now he is a bird of prey. Um, and there are many other birds of prey in the game. I have a couple more. There's this purple one. Uh, you can get these guys over in Maldraxxus. You can get like little parrots like this, Murderbeak. I think I found this guy in Zildazar. <clears throat> as well as um, undead models, just like with the raptors. But as far as the fell raven goes, he's going to spawn inside of Hellfire Citadel. They're all over the place. Get your ass to Hellfire Citadel and tame one of these bad boys up. Next. One of my favorite wolves in the game. The, damn, what is he even called? Uh, the Fellbound Wolf. The Fellbound Wolf. Now, obviously, this guy is badass. Not only is he glowing, but he has this cool animation inside of his body, and his eyes and his mouth are glowing orange, which just gives the pet a little bit more dimension. And this guy's bright, too. When he's by your side, he is, he straight up glows. Now, he belongs to the Ferocity Pet family, which means, again, you get Predator's Thirst and Primal Rage. Predator's Thirst giving you and your pet that little bit of passive leech to help you stay alive and your pet stay alive as long as you're both doing damage, uh, combined with that giant offensive cooldown that also comes with the Ferocity Pet spec. Now he also has the ability Furious Bite, which again is just like the, uh, the Fell Raven, slows the enemy's movement speed by 50% for 6 seconds on a 10 second cooldown. Now again, I told you you were going to start to see a pattern because the pets that I've picked here are the ones with the strongest special abilities. Now, in my opinion, there are three special abilities that are actually worth taking out of the six total special abilities that a pet can have. And so far, you have seen all three of them. What's important here is the combination of the special ability with the pet's spec. Now, in this case, with a movement speed decrease and a little bit of leech, and a giant offensive cooldown this is one of the best pets that you can take in battlegrounds not only because you can boost your entire team's dps by 30 percent for a full 40 seconds which is huge um, but you also get that little bit of extra survivability with the leech as well as a little bit of general utility with the slow just an all-in-all -all very well-rounded pet now there's tons of wolves that you can take. I am going to feature the Fellbound Wolf in this video. If you want to know where he spawns, it's going to be in the Tanan jungle. I will put a map up on the screen for you guys. But when you first encounter him, he's actually not going to be tameable. What you need is a vial of Fell Cleansing, which you can get off of an enemy named Fell Rangarian Nara, who's going to spawn just at the bottom of the map right here. After you get the Vial of Fell Cleansing, you just use it on the Fellbound Wolf and he will become tameable. Next, we're going to look at another great, well-rounded pet. Nevermore. This is the only pet in the game that you can tame that looks like this, and he's just freaking sick. 
this white raven with red eyes, almost like an albino raven, named Nevermore uh, naturally after the Edgar Allan Poe poem. And not only is he super unique, not only does he have a great combination of abilities, but he's also super easy to tame. You literally just walk right up to him and tame him. Now he spawns in the Barrel Knoll Cemetery in Drustvar, right on the location on the map that I have pinged for you. So if you wanna pick him up, that's where he's gonna spawn. Let's talk about what he brings to the table. Ferocity Pet Spec, once again, 10% passive leech for you and your pet, as well as the Primal Rage ability, buffing your haste and your entire team. Also comes with a special ability, Bloody Screech, which is essentially the Mortal Wounds ability reducing the effectiveness of any healing received by your enemy for 10 seconds. Now keep in mind that this ability is on a six second cooldown. So if you let your pet auto cast this, your enemy will always be under the effect of mortal wounds. And again, against enemy players, that is 25% reduction in healing received. And if you wanted to take this pet into PVE content, that against NPCs, that is gonna be a 50% reduction in healing received. Now once again, Great combination of abilities to take in PvP, where you get the little bit of extra survivability from Predator's Thirst. You get a little bit of offensive utility with Primal Rage, but here with the Bloody Screech, you get even more offensive utility if the movement speed slow that the wolves have to offer just isn't up your alley or isn't just, you know, what you want to play for the night even. And again, not to mention that he's one of a kind, looks like a freaking badass and is super easy to tame. There is no reason not to go pick this guy up. Next is going to be the Camaron. And despite his name, he actually belongs to the Hydra pet species, which is in the Tenacity pet spec. Now, just like the Raptors, there is no exotic pet in the game with this combination of pet spec and special ability. And just like with Nevermore, there is only one spot where you can tame this guy, and it's actually in the Blackwing Descent raid. And one thing to keep in mind about this pet when you're taming him, you can only tame him, and he's a boss. He's a boss in the raid, right? You have to take his health below 20% in order to tame him. Now, since we vastly, vastly outlevel this content now, you're gonna wanna take off literally all of your armor uh, and just use your weapon. And be very careful. You can literally just use your basic attacks to get him down low enough in health. Um, and once you get him below that 20% mark, you're gonna be able to tame him. Now, not only does he look cool, he is absolutely and 100% unique. He's got some fire in his mouth and he's got a very unique animation. As you can see, the heads kind of fight each other. Um, which is pretty cool. He's got two heads, three arms, this weird long yet stubby tail. I love this guy. And not to mention he's got a sick combination of pet spec and special ability belonging to the Tenacity pet family, the first pet in the Tenacity pet family in this video, bringing you endurance training and survival of the fittest. Now endurance training gives you and your pet a passive health increase. Now it's not a ton, you think if you have 30,000 health, you're gonna get an extra 1,500. So it could save, could very well save you from death. Um, don't get me wrong. It's just not that giant of a health increase, but it also does come with a survival of the fittest ability, which is uh, a defensive cooldown, reduces all damage you and your pet take by 20% for six seconds. Now it's on a three minute cooldown. Um, this ability is great if you find yourself in a sudden pinch and just another defensive option depending on your play style. If you don't want to take something in the ferocity pet family, which grants you that leech. Now, if you feel like you're going to benefit more from something a little bit more on demand like this, then by all means, uh, take this pet over something in the ferocity pet family or over a pet like Nevermore because he actually comes with the same special ability with the Mortal Wounds debuff. So comparing this pet to the Ravens, right? They both have the Mortal Wounds debuff. They both have some pretty good defensive utility. The difference is, and in my opinion, the Ravens are better and here's why. The difference is that the Ravens come not only with defensive utility, but also offensive utility. Whereas uh, the Hydras come with two abilities that are both kind of defensive utilities and in my opinion the 10% leech that you get from ferocity is just as good as endurance training and survival of the fittest combined now that's an opinion like i said there's a lot of people out there that are going to take tenacity over ferocity because you don't number one you don't have to be doing damage on in order to benefit from the defensive utility that this pet has to offer but also because with ferocity you get a steady stream of healing um instead of like a big reduction in in damage taken like you see here with the tenacity pet family 
So it's all about how the abilities combine together. It's all about the type of content that you're playing. And it's all about your personal play style. Guys, I hope this video helped out a lot. If it did, be sure to leave a like down below. And remember to subscribe if you want to see another video just like this next week. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Blue Monkey. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.